So once, we, once the ewe is lambed, then we need to make sure that we allow enough forage for that ewe to consume what she requires, not only to maintain herself, but to feed her multiple lambs to be growing at 300 grams a day plus, particularly in that first part of lactation. So if you think about the amount of feed that that ewe requires, it's a massive amount of feed. And uh, if the pasture covers are very low, then that ewe can't physically take enough bites in a 24 hour period to consume the amount of energy that she requires. So we need, do need to have our pasture covers at a reasonable height, around about the 13 or 1400 kilograms of dry matter per hectare to enable her to consume enough to feed herself and her lambs. Maximising lamb growth, we certainly, as soon as they can move and able without getting dismothered, they'll all finish lambing. Um, you get, them on a, get them mobbed up, you know, it might be three sets stocked paddocks into one sort of thing. Not too many, maybe 200 used to a mob. And yeah, it's just them every day, if not every second day, and just keep them rotating over maybe six or seven paddocks. Don't try and clean up paddocks at that time of year. There's plenty of time after winning to clean up paddocks. So just keep them moving so the lambs are always just picking the best all the time, and also the ewe. The key to the whole lamb growth rate is really lactation though, and getting those ewes milking really well. Um, so having fat on the ewes back at set stocking, having them in really good condition, butt fit, um, is, a, is a massive key. But yeah, like James says, um, certainly a lot of shifting and you know, each mob could be shifted 25 times before weaning, so um, it certainly is a big job, but we find it's worth it. A big game changer for us was um, drenching all the, the lambs at eight weeks of age, pre, pre-wean. Um, while it probably didn't do a lot for the top 40-50% of the lambs, the bottom 30-40% you know, had a huge increase in lift. And while they may not have looked better, they came yeah, over the scales yeah. weighing a lot heavier. When you've got a good weaning weight, um, it all flows through with our ewe lambs and it doesn't take too much to get them up to, to mating weight and have them in good condition to, the, to go to the ram in mid-April. By doing this, there's less feed required in, in mid-winter, which is expensive feed to really increase their body weight because the job's already done. Mm. When they start lambing and stuff, if they've already got a good frame, it makes a big difference in the ease of um, giving birth for a young hobbit, that's for sure. Based on the country that we've got here, we certainly rely a lot on subclover and annual legumes um, to give us the production we need. In order to do this we need to set our subclover up after our autumn rains to spell them and keep the ewes off them um, until they're ready to be grazed and then not graze them too hard. Where we tend to fall down in that uh, period through to weaning is in the late lactation. So in the early phases pre-tailing quantity seems to be the issue and after tailing its quality. So we don't have an issue with the amount of feed in most cases, certainly the quality. And in high legume systems, or where legume is introduced into systems, they do hold their quality late lactation and we certainly see positive results from that. When we first came here on un unimproved pastures we were doing around about 27 kilos weaning weight and to a couple of years ago with a 150 hectares of red clover, that was the main input, we ended up with 33-34 kg weaning weight. So we're getting about 60% of our lambs off mum and that allowed us to finish lambs to go right up and then typically sell at store in these dry years. But in a year like this when we've got spare feed we're able to finish a few lambs. Our priority is our replacement stock so the finishing stock follow that. The staggered mating with the hoggets gives us flexibility to hold on to them. We're able to either sell store or finish and that, that's a really flexible policy and it's able, you know, there's no point finishing them if we're going to impact the breeding stock.